Hi, I'm Gary here at Martin Lynch and & Sons and today I'm upstairs in the workshop helping out test all of the used equipment that's coming in and we're going through it as quickly as, you, as we can. So if you've got stuff in, um, do be patient. We are getting through it as quick as we can, but there's an awful lot of it. Um, I get asked quite a lot to how to put on M&P plugs. So I thought what I'd do is I'd show you today. I've got a couple of cables to do here. So let's crack on with it and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so if you want to, you can get all scientific and all the measurements and stuff are on, on the back here and you can use one of these very near or well, vernier calipers if you wish to, to set all the dims out. So how you would do that typically is you would take your measurement and you would then put a marker on there like so. So you would put your, your marker. If you read on the, on the paperwork here, um, trimming it, the, the guy says here, was it 10 millimeters? You'd set that for 10 millimeters and then you can just use your marker. Now, the thing is, I don't do it that way. It takes too long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a trusty uh, Swiss Army knife and I know roughly where to trim it. And even if you trim it a bit too long, it doesn't actually matter that much. And all I'm gonna do is pin them back. And what I've done here is it's about 10 or 11 millimeters here. I'll trim back and I'm just gonna peel that back like so, exposing that amount. Now here I've actually split out my plugs um, but I'm going to start with the, the PL259 uh, here um, and you'll notice that we've got the, the actual outer body, we've got the centre pin, we've got a spacer there, we've got an insulator, we've got a little top hat, a rubber uh, ring and then we've got a almost like a thrust bearing uh, there, a thin washer and then we've got the actual screw in end cap. Now I tend to, when you get these plugs, they're actually a part assembled. You'll find that that part and that part are assembled. I like to remove that because when this gets hot, that swells up and you can't put it back into the actual outer shield very easily. So I tend to leave it out like so. Now that one there is ready to go. Um, this is actually an N-type um, connector. This is a like an angled one. These are really, really easy to do. If we look inside there, I mean, you can see that, Henry. Um, inside there, you've got the center pin, which comes up. And what we would do is you would trim this back, inner and outer, so that it actually just goes through the actual hole in the side there, and we can solder that pin. We'll come back to that one in just a second. The one we're working on now is the SO239. So what I've done there, just about 10 mil, 10 or 11 mil, and that is the, the, the basics of it. Don't forget to put the outer nut on first, then you need your thrust washer, easy for me to say, the, um, the rubber ring, which just goes over the top, like so, and then you've got your little top hat. Now to put that on, what you do is you fold back the braid, very, very easily, just fold that back. You don't need to be to fussy with that, like so. Take your top hat, push that over the top, just give it a little gentle rotate, and then you're gonna push that up the, up the inner, like so. And then that will expose the, the center conductor um, without the braid on it. And just make sure you've got none, no stray hairs picking along there. Now, there, there is a, sort of some school of thought that um, when you look at the, the manufacturer's video, you, we, we see him trimming these sort of little hairs off. You can, if you want to, trim that off. I tend not to too much. I just bend them away. If they're too long, then, then fair enough, um, then, then trim them back. But these aren't, they're just about right. Um, I just leave them there because it actually helps uh, make a good contact in there, in, in my opinion. You don't have to. If you want to trim them back, you can. Take your sharp knife, obviously take a bit of care, and then all you're going to do is you're going to put the knife up against this edge, like so, okay, and you're just going to rock the knife back and then just cut that centre conductor off. And then take that bit of foil and that centre off. Just give it a little twist as it comes off and that will give you a nice end. And what you're looking for here is when you cut through this, this outer copper 
gets pushed along the actual um, inner insulator and can touch on this this inner just take your knife and just make sure that there's no little whispers of it sort of cutting across like so then we're going to take this um, this little disc insulator if I can keep hold of it like so and you're going to put that over there you go like so so what we've done now is we put this center insulator on there like so and what we're going to do is we're going to check now we got the the right amount and all you're looking for is just to see it through that hole so in the side there there's a tiny little hole there that little tiny hole and then you're going to put that over that wire like so okay and but you can just see there through that hole you can see the inner and then what we're going to do is normally i would have my vice up here so what we'll do is very simply we'll take our miniature little soldering iron and if anyone wants to know we do sell these little soldering irons they're a ts100 um, it's one of my favorite little little irons we do the tips and everything for them so let's just get this one going it's just warming up okay and what we're going to do we're just going to warm this up like so just let a little bit of heat soak through and what we want to do is just get a little bit of solder into that hole and you'll start to see it sink through and then we're just going to feed that solder in like so just give it a couple of seconds on there to heat through and that's it job done so that is essentially your soldered connector um, part you know that's that's pretty much it done the rest of it is just assembly so what we're going to do is please by the way don't touch that it is red hot um, we're going to take the insulator just leave it so it's rolling down like so then we're going to take the actual outer cover which is going to pop that over the little edge and then just push that on so once you push that down seat it down you can see that like so then we're going to take our thrust washer that just allows this nut to spin easily when it comes into contact with that rush, uh, rubber uh, ring and we're just going to tighten that up to it and then just use a couple of spanners the appropriate size i think it's 16 millimeters um, just to tighten that up and you want to just nip it so that it it squishes the o-ring um, and then that is your pl259 done okay so we've fitted a plug what we've got here is different cables and i'm going to go through very very quickly and very briefly with the uh, i mean if you want to know the fine print and all the all the specs and all that sort of stuff the mmp website is absolutely full of that sort of uh, information fill your boots but what we're going to do i'm going to talk about this this is probably my favorite and probably the most popular mmp sort of cable now this is double screen this has got a, a like a foil screen and a quite a fine uh, braid uh, screen so it's it's a really really good quality cable now this is pretty much on par i think probably somewhere between um you know rg213 and and uh, westflex 103 yet it still retains this kind of uh, really small diameter this is only seven millimeters so fantastic stuff now this comes in it's actually comes presently it comes in two forms but it's soon to come in a third form in yellow um, which is designed to be high, highly visible and i believe they've also changed it very very slightly to make it more um, versatile so we yet to see that and the specs for that cable again are on the M&P and on our website I believe for that sort of stuff um, but there is a Sahara version as well which is designed to sort of be put in sort of sunshine but it's the same type of cable um, it's uh, it's about the same sort of flexibility it's pretty much the same apart from it's got a white sort of screen so again if you want something that's high visible uh, highly visible then then this is a really good um, 
option or if you're actually going up against like a painted wall or something you don't want it to be sort of too in your face you can always use this so presently there are two ultra flex sevens a black version and a white version um, so you've got the standard and the sahara but there's a new one coming out um, keep your eyes out for that we will make a big fuss of that when it comes in so and it's not going to be too far away now there is a 10 uh, millimeter version of the seven millimeter version um, similar sort of cable but instead of going sort of pretty much up to say 200 megs this goes a bit further and, and is really good for sort of UHF and um, a little bit above so this will this is really ideal for VHF UHF stations and you know home base installs so really good stuff um, again if you want to know the specs and stuff like that they, they, we'll, we'll make links and stuff on our website but this is very similar to the Ultraflex 7, except this is a 10mm version and a lot less lossy. Now, there are some other versions. Um, I briefly mentioned this one. This one here is a um, is, is brought is, is airborne. Now, why do you want this? It's super light. Now, inside there, you've actually got a solid conductor. Um, it's a solid aluminium conductor which is actually plated with copper and you've got this the the standard sort of um, foil uh, shielding and uh, foil shielding so again this is a really good quality uh, cable if you're going on an expedition or you know something like that you you want to take this it cuts down on weight on shipping so if you've got like you know four or five drums of this stuff and you know it makes a huge difference you know sort of carrying it around so again if you're if you're going out on a field day this is a good um, option because it's light and it's easy to carry so that's what makes this so special the downside is it's not quite as flexible um, and if you can't really use it on something like a rotator although you could I suppose take it up to uh, the base of a rotator and then put some flexible parts in if you use good joiners and that actually quickly reminds me to, to mention the connectors the M&P connectors are very very good connectors they're not the cheapest they're not like £1.99 PL259s or SO239s these are well-made connectors, but they still remain pretty affordable, I think. You know, they're typically somewhere between, say, 7 and £10 a connector. Lots of you say, oh, wow, that's really expensive. But trust me, in the world of RF connectors, 7 and £10 is chicken feed. So, you know, good quality connectors for the money, I think. And so I, we always recommend these. So really, really, um, they, they're good for, you know, low-loss uh, applications. Then we go to like a, a similar version of this this cable, which is the Ultraflex 13. Now this is typically used for, um, you know, UHF and and above, a lot of or high power um, situations. So this this one I think is is very very good if you've got a real sort of high end station. It's really really good quality cable. It does cost a lot more than all the others, but again, all the spec is available on our website. If you really want to go slightly smaller, this one's Hyperflex. So this is very similar to sort of RG58, I think. It's just a better quality. You've got slightly less loss, but it's that same diameter. This is approximately five or six millimeters diameter. It's very, very flexible. And it's quite good, I think, for sort of things like car installs and things like that. If you needed sort of something for portable, um, you know small sort of lightweight portable this is quite a good option as well so you know and it's easy to work with absolutely fine we also what's this one it's given me here this one is hyperflex the clues in the name of this one is very very similar spec to the ultra flexes except the difference is that it's very very flexible I, th I believe it's got a much finer um, braid around it which makes it just that little bit more uh, flexible and versatile so this is quite good for things like um, rotators or links and and things like that things that get you know moved around quite a lot and then going very quickly this isn't an mmp product um, but we thought we'd mention it anyway lots of people ask whether or not we sell um, you know the um, this sort of type of uh, ribbon cable type stuff um, the answer is yes we do we make i mean 
back in the day I used to make J, J poles and all sorts of things out of this stuff. This is so versatile, but it's also one of the best feed lines that you can use. If you've got the, the right sort of uh, maybe tuna system or um, you know whatever it is you've got this connected to, this is a really, really good option for feed line. Um, lots of people swear by sort of doing that kind of um, feed line. That pretty much sums it up so um thanks for watching this has been a lot longer than um, we anticipated i hope that you haven't all fallen asleep thanks for watching and um, do give the sales guys a call on 0345 2300 um, or you can email sales at sales at hamradio.co.uk and of course at any stage you can give us a call and we'll quite happily talk you through the range um, again we will be getting some more catalogs in there's loads of information on the M&P website, as is, the, I believe, on our website. So please pop along. So see you soon.